The circular flow model is a simplified economic model that illustrates the interrelationship between the various economic participants. According to this model, the various participants within the economy, which are households, business, and government, as well as the foreign sector, all work together to ensure that societal needs are provided for through the creation of goods and services. In this video, we'll discuss the circular flow model, covering its definition. We'll also cover what is meant by closed economy and open economy, as well as the difference between real flow and money flow. We'll also discuss the four participants in the circular flow. We'll then discuss the various types of markets within this four sector model. So, subscribe now to Kano Academy and let's explore this topic of circular flow model as part of the subject of economics. Let's start with the basics. Imagine an economy with only two participants, which comprises of households who own the factors of production, such as labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and natural resources, as well as businesses who in turn supply the goods and services to such households. This is called a two-sector model and is considered a closed economy. If we then add the government to our model, which provides goods and services to both households and businesses, we now have a three-sector model. However, this is still considered a closed economy, because we haven't included foreign trade. To make our economy open, we would need to include the foreign sector, which means, we're now trading with the rest of the world, through imports and exports of goods and services. The model is now considered open, with all four participants, comprising of, households, businesses, the government, and the foreign sector. In summary, whenever we have all four participants, we have a four-sector economy, and this is considered an open economy. So, let's now explain in detail what the circular flow model is. The circular flow model is a simplified economic model that illustrates the interrelationship between the various economic participants. In other words, this model illustrates how the economy works, and the relationship between production, income and expenditure, in relation to, the interaction between the various economic participants. As indicated in our illustration at the beginning, this circular flow model, can be represented either through a closed economy, or an open economy. A closed economy is made up of three participants, which comprises of, households, businesses, and the government. This means that, these participants do not trade with other countries. While an open economy adds the foreign sector to the households, businesses, and the government. Which means that we're now trading with the rest of the world through imports and exports of goods and services. There are also two forms of flows in a circular flow model, being the real flow and the money flow. The real flow is a movement of goods and services between the participants in the circular flow model. The money flow, on the other hand, is the movement of money in the form of income and expenditure, in the circular flow model. As previously mentioned, there are four possible participants in the circular flow model, which comprises of, private households or private consumers, the business sector, the government or the state, as well as, the foreign sector. Let's now discuss each of these participants in more detail. Starting with, private households. Households are individuals or a group of people who live together and who make joint economic decisions. They are regarded as the primary economic participant because they own, directly or indirectly, the production factors and are also the consumers of goods and services. They are usually hired by the business sector as well as the government to provide their labor. They also receive income and pay tax to the government. Now let's discuss the business sector as one of the participants in the circular flow model. A business is an organization that is owned by an entrepreneur who usually brings together the other factors of production so that goods and services can be produced. They also pay taxes to the government from the income they receive. Now let's focus on the government. A government is a broad term that refers to local, regional, and national government. It includes politicians, civil servants, 
government agencies, and any other bodies owned or under the control of the government. The main function of the government is to provide public goods in the economy. The foreign sector is also another participant within the circular flow model. Trade between countries take place in the foreign market through exports and imports. Imports are goods produced in other countries and purchased by local households. While exports are goods produced locally by local businesses within the country and then sold to other countries. In addition to the above participants, there are also several key types of markets within the circular flow, which includes the product or goods market, the factor, resources, or input market, the financial markets, as well as the foreign exchange market. Let's now discuss each of these four types of markets in the context of the circular flow model. Product market is where goods and services are bought and sold. Firms, the government, and the foreign sector supply these goods and services, and their movement is called real flow. Consumers, firms, the government, and the foreign sector buy these goods and services, and their payments represent money flow. Goods are defined as any tangible items such as food, clothing, and cars that satisfy some human needs. In capital goods market, products such as buildings and machinery are exchanged. Consumer goods market also involves the trading of durable consumer goods, semi-durable consumer goods, and non-durable consumer goods. Services, on the other hand, are defined as non-tangible actions and includes wholesale and retail, transport, and financial markets. Factor market is where factors of production are exchanged, for example, the labor market, property market, and the financial markets. Households are the owners of factors of production, and they sell them to firms, to produce goods and services. The factors of production are labor, entrepreneurship, capital, and land, and they're exchanged for wages, profit, interest, and rent, respectively. Factor services are real flows, and they are accompanied by counter flows of income, on the factor market. Financial markets render financial services, to the other participants in the economy by gathering surplus funds and lending them to those who need funding. Banks, insurance companies, and pension funds form part of the financial market. Financial markets are not directly involved in the production of goods and services, but act as a link between households and businesses with surplus income and other participants who require it. The foreign exchange market is a multinational market where currencies of all the countries are traded, for example, the South African rand can be exchanged for the US dollar. The foreign exchange market originates when one country imports goods from another country, and domestic currency have to be exchanged, in order to pay for such imports. Foreign exchange can be bought and sold at the banks, and through foreign exchange agencies. The South African rand is freely traded in the forex markets, and its value is determined by the market forces of demand and supply. Just to recap and in summary, the circular flow model outlines the interaction between different participants and markets in an economy. There are four participants in a circular flow model comprising of households, businesses, and the government, all making up a closed economy. One other participant is the foreign sector, making up the four-sector model, and resulting in, an open economy. In addition to the above participants, there are also several key types of markets within the circular flow, which includes, the product or goods market, the factor, resources, or input market, the financial markets, as well as, the foreign exchange market. We've come to the end of this video. Remember that, you can always re-watch the video, if you need more understanding, on the topic. We also hope we were able to provide more clarity on the topic. If we have, please leave us a comment, below this video, because we'd love to hear from you, and what you have learned, from this video. You can also like this video, to show your appreciation, and also share it, on your social media. Until we meet again, happy learning, from Kano Academy. Stay creative. Stay curious. 
and stay connected.